it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. As you guys can tell by my surroundings, I am back in Chicago for my second semester of my sophomore year. Does anybody else see that little piece of hair that I didn't notice that's just sticking out for like half the video? Oh, that is annoying me so much. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, as usual, being back in this space, I want to apologize for the crappy lighting. Once again, it's a cloudy day. Every day I plan to film, it's cloudy here. Um, but I am actually planning on getting a ring light soon um, for my videos because I don't have any professional lighting here with me. And I think it could really help. Um, so just bear with me for the time being. I'm going to order one very, very soon. So I should have it for all upcoming videos, which I'm very excited about um, because I really like this background, but I feel like it's hard to appreciate because the lighting is a bit crappy. Um, but nevertheless, as you guys can tell from the title, I'm here today to do a video that I make every single year, you know, around this time in January of the new year. I usually like to take this first month of the new year to kind of reflect on the past year. And I've been making this video for the past few years, um, talking about my five favorite albums of the previous year, in this case being 2019. I think 2019 overall was an okay year for music, honestly. Um, I think I was a little bit more excited at the beginning of the year, and I won't say I got let down, but you know, when I was figuring out what my list was going to be, there just wasn't a lot to choose from that I really liked. Um, and some things, it takes me a little while that I still have to listen to them, you know, but um, I think 2020, by the way, is going to be amazing. I think this year is like going to be the complete opposite of 2019. I think there's so many new amazing like albums that are going to come out this year. But we're not talking about 2020, today we're talking about 2019. So as usual, I'm going to start at 5 and go to 1, 1 being my most favorite. And yeah, let's just jump right into this. Also, before I get into the video really quick, I just want to let you guys know, some of you guys might know, follow me on Twitter or my social media, that I am a part of the radio station at my school, WLUW 88.7, and I actually have a radio show this semester. Um, I usually tweet about it when I'm live. Last semester, I just did some substituting here and there and just sub for people's shows. I didn't have my own show, but now I do, and it is going to be every Thursday from noon to 2 p.m. Uh, Central Time. I would love it if you guys would listen. I normally do tweet um, when I am alive. I might not every week though, now that I have a set schedule, but I will try to tweet the link. Um, if you go to WLUW.org, you can listen there. I will put all the information down below. Um, you can also just turn on your radio and go to 88.7 FM and like it'll be there as well. Um, if you have the TuneIn Radio app, which is really nice, it's a good way to listen to radio on the go. You can just search a WLUW um, Chicago Broadcast Alliance and it will come up. I play tunes every week, some of my favorite, you know, alternative songs, and it's a super fun time. You can hear me talk about music and stuff like that. So just thought I'd let you guys know if you guys are interested in listening to me on the radio, because it's a really fun thing and I'm really excited about it. But without further ado, let's get into the actual video. So number five on my list is Panorama by Law Dispute. I saw them go on tour for this album back in April, and I really did enjoy this album a lot. I think it has a really um, neat aesthetic and just like really cool vibes of this album, both with the al album art and um, the name of a lot of the songs, and just the sound of everything. It really flows together very well. Um, it has a really neat opening with the song Rose Quartz, and I remember when they were on tour for this album, they also opened with that song. And I think it's a beautiful start to the album. It gets my anticipation up, it gets me really excited for the rest of the album. And I got to hear a lot of the new songs live, which is really cool. Um, my favorite songs of the album are Fulton Street 1, because there's also Fulton Street 2. Um, I love the first one. I love when he keeps yelling um, the quote, Will I ever put flowers by the street? He just keeps yelling that in the chorus. And like I said, I saw this live in April, and it was very emotional to see live for them. Um, they were putting their all into these new songs. Another one of my favorites is Anxiety Panorama and There You Are, parentheses, Hiding Place. Those are also really great songs on the album that I recommend checking out. Um, this album definitely reminds me of kind of a tamer version of Rooms of the House, which is my favorite Lotus Butte album, because it is a concept album, but there isn't as much yelling and screaming throughout the album, and I like it. I mean, I think they, they know when to get a little more aggressive, you know, in certain songs, and they don't overdo it, which I really like, and I don't think that Rooms of the House overdoes it in any way, but I really like, um, I don't know, just kind of the way that they laid out the whole album, and it's definitely, like I said, a bit tamer, um, but I think it's still La Dispute, it still sounds like them, and I think they did a great job with it. My fourth favorite album of 2019 is All Together by Turnover, and let me put it this way, so Turnover albums, first off, love Turnover, as you guys know, I feel like Turnover albums have become like seasons for me. So Peripheral Vision reminds me of the fall, 
you know, and then you have Good Nature, which gives me total summer vibes. I think it gives everybody summer vibes. And then they came out with All Together, which gives me 100% winter vibes. I don't know if it's because it came out, you know, in like late fall, early winter, but I just love the sound of this album. It just, it's so cozy. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but it just reminds me of like Cozy Nights by the Fireplace. Like that's the thing that instantly jumped out to me listening to this album, is it's very cozy and it just, I want to like sit, you know, in front of a fireplace while I listen to these songs. I think it kind of is an album that can bring people together. It's relatable. Um, some of my favorite songs on it are Plant Sugar and Parties. Um, Parties is really cool. It's definitely like a, it's kind of a story song um, talking about, uh, you know, someone being invited to all these quote unquote like stupid parties and he doesn't really want to go but I think he has friends or maybe a significant other that likes to go and so he kind of has to deal with it and I think it can kind of be relatable. I'm not a huge partier. Maybe that's why I liked it. I don't know. I just like the concept of the song and like I said this album definitely took some time to grow on me but I really like it now um, and initially too I was still blown away by Turnover because I really just don't think they can write a bad song at this point or a bad album. And, um, you know, although this is different than the other albums, like I said, because they reminded me of different seasons, it's still turnover, and it still now gives me, like, a cozy winter vibe, and I've been listening to it all winter so far, and I just, I love it. So, definitely a great, great album. My third favorite album of 2019 is A Different Shade of Blue by Knocked Loose. You know, we repping the Knocked Loose flag back here. Um, I love this album. I think a lot of people did. Um, people have been raving about this album, and I agree. I think it is such a mature album, and it, so much more mature than Laugh Tracks, and that's not dissing Laugh Tracks at all. Laugh Tracks is still, I don't know what's my favorite Knocked Loose album anymore, to be honest, um, but it was for a really long time, and I, I mean, I still love the album, basically. You know, I want to stress that. I love Laugh Tracks, but I was definitely blown away by kind of like the use of like new sounds and riffs in this new album, and I just think it sounds more mature because it sounds like they tried so many new things. It still sounds like Knocked Loose, which I love, but like I said, they use like these different riffs, and new sounds, and I just, I don't think they were afraid to play around with new things, and I love when bands do that. My favorite songs, I have a few. Um, first one is In the Walls. I love the build up to the chorus of this song. It's fantastic. I talked about how I crowd surfed to this song when I saw them on the tour for this album, and it was a time. I also love Guided by the Moon. You know, I love the lyrics to this song. I think it's so fun to scream or sing along to. And this is the song where he says, this is a different shade of blue in the song. And I mean, you know, it's perfect. I think the album just flows so, so well. Um, and lastly, you know, Mistakes Like Fractures is a great single. I think it worked very well as a first single for the album because it sounded enough like normal Knocked Loose and kind of like laugh tracks. There was hints of different things and it got people really excited for the album and it's a very catchy chorus you know he just keeps screaming mistakes like fractures it's very easy for people to get into and i love like the drums and just the sounds in this song it's just it's so upbeat it's so intense and i love it my second favorite album of 2019 is ruby by matt carrickey so y'all know i love him oh my gosh a lot of this album is just oh my god it's beautiful this album is so much um about like somebody's future and it's super uplifting which i really like you know matt talks a lot about like being proud of people and like the memories that he spent with them before they left he talks a lot about people leaving but you know, him cherishing the time they had together. And it's definitely like a happier vibed album than Luna and the Wild Blue Everything, which was his first debut full length, which I loved. I mean, I've been listening to him for like three years now, four years, like, I was so excited for this new album from him. And I just love how it's a different vibe. Like Luna is definitely a sadder album. Even though there are still some upbeat songs, the lyrics are still a lot sadder. And I just, I love like the, this kind of just, happy almost like springtime vibes this album gives me like if i'm in a bad mood i will play just one of you know the songs on this album and i'm just so much happier like i just it makes me cry in a good way like it gives me a happy cry it's just it's such like a a nostalgic sounding record it sounds like it could have been from like an era long ago i think and i don't know it doesn't really sound like a 2019 release but i love that about it i think it's almost timeless i think a lot of his music is my favorite songs, well, let me just say my favorite song in general for a while has been Diamonds, which is from this album. I've been rocking Diamonds. That is the song that if I'm in a bad mood, I play that song and I just like want to dance and like smile. It's just, please listen to that song. It has such a, like a queen vibe, I think as well, which I love. 
Another one of my favorites is Hawthorne, and this song makes me cry. It is so beautiful. There's a beautiful build-up in this song as well. And there's so many cute lyrics. Um, there's a lyric that says, I was just a kid back then. Everything has been written off. Now I am your protection, and you are someone I adore. Which is, like, so cute. Like, I just, oh my god, there's so many cute lyrics in these, these songs, and I just, I can't. Um, also, the title track, Ruby, it goes off. Like, this song just opens the album in a fantastic way. It's a great opening hook. It's just, like, a very happy and uplifting beat. So if you're looking for, not, like, an emo record, but a happier record from 2019 that's acoustic and fun and happy, listen to this album. Listen to Matt Carricky. It's, it's fantastic. And finally, my number one favorite album of 2019 is Breathe by Tiny Moving Parts. Their last album, Swell, before this, I loved. That was on my album of the year for that year as well. I don't think it was number one, but it was very high up on the list. And they just keep releasing good music. Like, if you have slept on Tiny Moving Parts, please listen to them. Like, I, if you're into kind of pop punk and just really, really amazing guitar riffs, please listen to them. They are so incredibly talented. I finally got to see them live this year, and I just got to appreciate them so much more. I saw them on tour for this album. It was fantastic. They are just so talented. The lead singer, who's also the guitarist, like, he can do insane things with his fingers. Like, he's like, like, I don't know, watching it was mesmerizing. And it's nice because it's, it's kind of like a swell 2.0, but I don't want to, I feel like some saying that is like kind of discrediting it and making it sound like it's not new, because it is. It was a fresh and new thing for Ten Moving Parts, but it still sounded like that, which was pretty perfect. It was... I don't know, I think it is kind of like a Swell 2.0, but I'm not mad at that because I love Swell. And I think it, overall it's like a faster version of Swell. Like you hear new guitar riffs you haven't heard before. It's not repetitive. Um, some of my favorite songs from it are The Midwest Sky. I love that. And maybe that's because I live in the Midwest now. I don't know. But I love that song so much. There's just so many great lyrics about like the Midwest and being under the Midwest sky. And it is just so like passionate. I just love that song. I also love Medicine, which is one of the singles. Um, I think it was a really, really great single. I think there's just so many great songs from this album. Icicles is really good. Oh my god, I could just... This album is fantastic. If you like Swell, I recommend listening to this if you haven't already. And giving Tiny Moving Parts a chance. They're such great guys. Um, they're so passionate, like when they're on stage and stuff. And so I was just pleasantly surprised with this album. I mean, I heard the singles and I was like, wow, like they're amazing. Will the whole album be like this? And it is. I was listening to it on loop before I saw them live, just over and over, and I didn't get tired of it. It's so catchy, but it's not too repetitive. Like, I think they're just a perfect mix of, like, catchy, but not repetitive, which I really appreciate, and I think they're great songwriters, both lyrically and instrumentally, and I just love them. So that was my number one album of 2019. So there you guys go. Those are my top five favorite albums of 2019. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to comment down below some of your guys' favorite albums of 2019 because I would love to hear it. Um, I had some other favorite EPs that I didn't mention. Let me just say honorable mention goes to Jetty Bones EP, which is just a line, like a dash or dash EP. I almost wanted to put that on this list, but I was like, it's an EP, it's not an album. Also, Nella Vita by Grayscale could also receive an honorable mention. Um, I almost put it on this list, but it didn't quite make the cut, but I think also it's still a very nice pop punk album. But let me know, like I said down below, what your favorite albums of 2019 are. I would love to hear it. And other than that, um, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you guys liked it, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!